Jay Booksbaum back for Seder number two or part two of Pesach Swirl with my good buddy, Gabe Getter. Hey, Gabe. Welcome back. So we still have a bunch of questions we haven't asked, answered mm-hmm. yet. We can't answer all of them, but let's 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 get a few. Let's get a few. What's Absolutely. the first? Okay. What's the first one? So next we have Rachel from Atlanta. Okay. I've heard people are using sparkling wines for kiddush and the seder. Why would that make sense? And do you have any specific suggestions? Okay. okay. So 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 go ahead. We discussed this. Uh, on our Purim episode, if I remember, uh, if I recall correctly, uh, we have the Herzog Metal Champenoise. Uh, here, this is the Freshnet uh, Cava. But what, what do these two wines have in common besides being sparkling? They're both made in the traditional method. That's right. That's right. So they're both going under a secondary fermentation in the bulb. Both of them are Mevushal. Uh, so if you need Mevushal wine for your seder or for any of your meals, uh, over uh, over Pesach, uh, these are uh, excellent uh, choices. It also so, makes the Yitziat Mitzrayim kind of celebratory. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. But I would suggest, and I want to be clear on this, uh, you defer to your rabbinic authority because these are both white wines. And there is an opinion that the wine that you should be drinking is the wine that you enjoy most, even if it's not red. But, you know, defer to your local rabbinic authority. You might, might, they might say, add a little red wine to it, so it'll give it the color. But again, we're not rabbis, so, you know, defer to your rabbinic authority. But these are still delicious choices. And uh, well, well, why would somebody use a sparkling wine at the Seder? One idea is because it is a celebration That's of right. Yitzhak Mitzrayim, right? We're celebrating our freedom. We're ce- celebrating, you know, uh, leaving Egypt, Yitzhak Mitzrayim. Uh, and... There's nothing more celebratory than uh, sparkling wine. Uh, so that's one of the answers. Also, it's refreshing, it's light, uh, it's uh, very often crowd pleasing uh, to use a uh, sparkling wine. So, those are just uh, some of the many reasons to, uh, to use sparkling wine. And I personally use very often throughout the year sparkling wine for Kiddush. And what I also noticed on the Freshnet, for example, is that it's 12% alcohol, yeah. which is about 10%, 15%, 20% lower than, you know, some richer, heavier reds and other whites. That's true. So uh, this is, of course, full alcohol, about 13%, but mm-hmm. you're right. All those other reasons are good reasons. Okay, what's the next question? Okay. So we have Yoni. We have Yoni from LA. What, LA. So he's going, he says, I'm going to Mexico, but you know, I know people are going to Dubai and, uh, and they're going, you know, out of the country. So what wine is available there? Because I don't want to schlep. Very good question. Excellent question. And you know, I have friends that are doing this too. And they ask this all the time. Do I, you know, what, what should I take in my suitcase? Well, I was in Dubai when they first, after the Abraham Accords and when they first opened up. And you can get, let's show them, I actually pull them. You can get the Rothschild wine. You can get Bartonura. You can get Baron Herzog. Um, and there are other several French wines. The distributor, by the way, in Dubai happens to be called MMI. But in Mexico, there are three or four different distributors that have the complete line of kosher wines. Uh, Baron Herzog, Barkan. Um, Shilo, Shilo, Benjamina, I mean, uh, Bartonura. So up they're wazoo. readily available. They don't it's have readily to readily available like, in pre-order. Mexico. You don't have to schlep anything with you. In Dubai, you also don't have to schlep anything with you as long as you are okay with a more limited, a more limited selection. And when I say limited selection, you're still talking about 30, 40, 50 different varieties. So don't worry, most places in the world, you can get kosher wine. Yeah, and those are excellent choices that you uh, that you are showing us, Jay, because you have, you know, for people who like the the blue ball, the Moscato, something sweet and light and, uh, and and simple, and for those who like the heavier, more sophisticated, more complex uh, dry red wines, uh, the Baron Rothschild Omedoc is a great example. There's even the Bartonur, for example, is readily available in most Caribbean islands. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I also suggest, if you have any questions, I specifically spoke about Dubai and Mexico, but if you have any questions of where you're going, and it's a far-off place, call the local Jewish community. 
they will tell you what's available readily. So there's, there's a great question, and hopefully we gave you some great insights on your travel plans for this Pesach. What's the last question? Or do I think we have time for one more question. So what is that last question? One or two more. One two or two more. more. Okay. It has okay, to be so, four questions. It's a Pesach episode. All right. That's right. So we have Suri from Lawrence, New York, the five towns. Which wine would be good to satisfy a wide variety of people and tastes? Mm, okay. So you, you actually chose two wines. Mm -hmm. One is off dry. And the other is completely dry, correct? That's right. Okay. They're both And lights. both, but, but they're both very, you know, satisfying to a wide variety of tastes. And they're both whites. So again, check with your local rabbi, or just use them for Yontif meals if you have any, you know, exactly. if they want you to use only reds. You know, we, we always hear uh, questions, which wines for the seller and all that. Don't forget that Pesach is a eight days or seven days if you're, if you're in Eretz Israel. Uh, Don't uh, stop drinking wine just because the seders are over. Exactly. Right? There, there's a lot of Yom Tov meals. There's Chol Moed. Those are also very uh, celebra uh, celebratory days. And most people are on vacation mm -hmm. or taking vacation. In, in hot places like Dubai, and, Mexico. Oh, back to the chill sparkling yeah. wine. Florida, Let's go. California. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you want something that's refreshing, that's great for uh, the, the warm weather. Uh, so you have the Barkan Reserve, uh, give us uh, It's a semi-dry uh, white wine. Uh, it's delicious. It's got those notes of tropical fruit, peach and lychee. Uh, there is a perfume aroma of like rose. Uh, it's, really, uh, it's really wonderful. Uh, that's a, another big uh, crowd pleaser. And then we have uh, the Rima Pere Sauvignon Blanc. Oh, goodness. I tasted this. You know, I'm crazy about the Goose Bay Sauvignon Blanc because it's lively and fresh and kind of a lemony sweetness to it. You yeah. know, it's not sweet, but it's got that fresh, lively, lemony sweetness to it. This Rima Pear is right up there. In fact, I don't know, it's good competition to the Goose it's, Bay. It's great competition. And it's from Rothschild. It's, go ahead, describe it because okay. I was just blown away by it. So. You've heard of the of the Rothschild. We just talked about the the Ome Doc from the from the Rothschild family. They have estates all around the world. So of course the old world in France, uh, in Bordeaux, but they have also in Argentina, like Fletcher's the de, de Los Andes, uh, and they have now in New Zealand uh, this Rima Pere, fantastic estate uh, with this uh, delicious uh, New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc from the Marlboro uh, region. And we're gonna have some fun because. Everyone looks at this and they go, oh, it's a screw cap, it must be a pretty cheap wine. And the answer is no. Every Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand, I believe, is the rule, must come in a screw cap. That's right. But I have a fun way, you know, Why? everybody, because I think it's the law. I think it's the law there, because they want to make it more, uh, um, what do you call it, eco-friendly. So these are a much more recyclable. Oh, I thought they were making it more accessible. And, and it is more accessible, but I have a lot of fun, you know, just pulling the cork. When you pull that cork, you hear that pop. So there's no fun, right, in a screw cap, but watch, this is fun. Instead of holding the cap, hold the bottle, and hold the bottom of the cap, and turn the bottle. Nice. And you never touch the cap, and yet the cap is now released. Isn't that there cute? And I teach this to people in restaurants all the time. I made my Bori Pierre Guffin already, but I want you to taste this, and yes, there's a little eulage left. And there's an example of how you can still get a exactly. touch of red out of your white. Make, make yourself a blush, you know, a rosé, uh, by leaving just a little drop of red wine and in the man, glass. oh man, you open it and it fills the room with white grapefruit. Delicious. Right? Amazing aroma. And I get all sorts of, you know, nerdy notes, uh, like a freshly cut grass. Uh, and all that stuff that uh, wine geeks like you and me uh, often uh, uh, talk, find about, and right? talk about uh, the, the way we describe wine. Excuse me? <laughs> so it's a really delicious, it's a 21, which means that, remember, down under, remember, it's a southern hemisphere. So they're, they uh, harvest their wines in March, January. April, yeah. oh, March, April? March, April, yeah. Okay, March, April. So it's it's not even a year old, mm -hmm. right? It's really quite delicious. It's actually right. It's, it's just about a year old. It's quite delicious. Gabe, this is a lot of fun. Oh, we have one more question. Don't four we? questions. You guys we have do. had we have too three much questions. to drink. We got to do a fourth do. question. What's exactly. the fourth question? Let's drink more. <laughs> just joking. Okay, Shmuel from Brooklyn. What other alcohol can be kosher for Passover? Okay, so. 
alcohol uh, in general it's it's sometimes a little tricky perhaps even frustrating for some people you know who love their whiskey for example you mean frustrating uh, frustrating. frustrating frustrating <laughs> he got it first well third try third try you know it's the same thing in hebrew uh, you know the where do you put the Mira, emphasis Mira, Mira, yeah, exactly Mira. Mira, Mira. Uh, so there are Mira, Mira, Mira. There, is, uh, there are spirits that are kosher for Passover, they are not grain based. Uh, so we have, okay, Slivovitz, very traditional, yet delicious, uh, plum brandy. Plum brandy, right. Arak, from Israel, the elite from Arak. Anis, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And Louis Rayet, so this is the XO, the top of the line, cognac. Uh, so that's... Uh, grape distillate. It's basically uh, it's wine that's made into uh, brandy. That's this. Uh, there's a distillation on wine, and that's how you obtain a uh, brandy. Yet the the bracha, the blessing on this is shehakel because it's not wine, even though it's made originally from wine, uh, and it's got that rich, um, that rich flavor, uh, a, a little bit of, of of perceived sweetness. It's not sweet. Uh, and and usually, you know, if you're a whiskey drinker, uh, you can and you should enjoy cognac. Not just on Pesach, year-round. And and actually, unlike some other whiskeys, this is drunk warm. Mm -hmm. uh, most people put in a snifter and they kind of hold it. It's a shahako, and that's because of the distillation process. It completely transforms, and it's made out of, I believe, it's Chenin Blanc that they use primarily. Uh, I don't know if they use uh, Chenin Blanc or... Chenin Blanc is one of the varieties. I think it's several varieties uh, for uh, for this. But Variety Chenin Blanc is one is one of uh, is one of the var uh, varieties, grape varieties uh, that are used to uh, produce. Uh, and they to, actually to ferment produce. it into wine first, mm -hmm. and then re uh, distill it into this brandy, which is because it and and kind of like champagne, cognac can only be called cognac. If it comes from, from the region of cognac in France, right, That's and right. it can only use certain grapes, I believe. Yeah, there's only a, a, a few uh, grape. Uh, One of which grapes, I know. Grapes uh, that, that are used to, to, to produce uh, to produce cognac. Well, this is great. This is great stuff mm -hmm. and great questions. Yeah, uh, I know there also is a vodka. There is a vodka. There is vodka. There is there tequila. Is, there is gin. Tequila. There is uh, gin. There, there is there is uh, the, the, there is pretty much everything. Except uh, of scotch, course. rye, yeah, because yeah, those <laughs> Except, are all made yeah, from grains, yeah, yeah. right? Except for scotch, whiskey, rye, uh, bourbon, uh, bourbon, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So all of those, of course, you're not gonna find uh, in kosher for Pesach. But you know, it's fantastic that there is cognac. I, th I personally love cognac. I don't drink cognac just in Pesach. I'm drinking it around. Uh, and uh, I think it's a great opportunity for people to also discover coming. We want to thank all of you people out there that asked all these wonderful questions. I'm sorry we couldn't get to all of them. We'd love to hear more questions. We'd love to hear more questions. Send your questions right here, and me and Gabe will try to answer as many as we can. Absolutely. Even if it's not online on the swirl, we'll try to answer them personally. Uh, thank you very much, and have a really, really celebratory pace. Celebratory. Celebratory face. See uh, now, I'm I'm catching it from you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's contagious. Hi, Kesher Samir.